Hi everyone and welcome to Warno. Today we're going to take a look at some pack decks, sort of the top three or so packed divisions right now, based on a discussion I've had with uh, Hippie, Tanner, a Wooden Box and Lathans, who are all people who play in the tournament. Now I don't build my decks quite the same way they would, they're building them for 1v1 tournament games. I tend to play more team games, so I'll put in a couple of fun units, whereas they'll be taken a bit more seriously, and mainly be putting in units that are very cost-effective, etc, etc. So, my build will be slightly different to theirs, but the principle is the same, and we'll talk about the units as we go through, and you can, you know, adjust it therein. So, first we're looking at the 39th, so... In my head, the 39th Infantry were probably still the top deck because they've got good tanks and they've got plenty of infantry, which are both pretty important. Then I was only and ring after that. The 79th were pretty good in my head because of the tanks and they still get a fair amount of infantry. And then after that, I was completely stuck. So all of them were pretty much in the agreement that the 39th and 79th are sort of the top two. And then quite a few of them said the 4th was after that. So what we'll do is we'll do the 39th, we'll do the 79th, and then we'll maybe have a look at the 4th as well. But I'm going to whiz through them a bit faster than I usually would, so I won't discuss them in quite as much detail. A lot of you will be coming to this video having seen my previous video, so you'll have a basic understanding of what weapon types are, etc, etc, I'm sure. So, first things first, you want to get your supply. Now, as ever, it's up to you what you bring. This division actually have pretty decent options. So you get five trucks with a thousand each, or you get ten with five hundred. So you can mix and match here. Obviously, it works out a bit cheaper to go for the trucks, five points cheaper to be exact. And you can still take two of those, but it depends how many trucks or supply vehicles you're going to want spread across a map. Honestly, I actually think 10 Urals is probably enough for most games. If you're struggling beyond that, then uh, I don't know. I think 10 is enough. I really, I wouldn't be worrying about it, especially if they're going to be adding fobs and things soon in some format or another. Then when it comes to your command, it's completely up to you. Again, it's a personal choice. You can take the chopper if you really want. I don't like command choppers, as you know. I just feel they're too easy to kill, so I wouldn't go for it myself but some people use them really effectively so don't rule them out if you are good at keeping them alive in terms of the other options here there are three of each so it doesn't matter which one you go for to be honest you can go for this which has a little bit of armor this which has slightly more armor and this which has less armor but is faster i mean this one can defend itself it's not a bad option this one can also defend itself a little bit with a couple of machine guns. This one has no guns. Uh, I mean, for the sake of 20 points, you could get that with a couple of machine guns on it. But the armor is pretty much the same. What you're getting here is speed. I don't know. I mean, honestly, for the sake of saving points, I'm just going to go with a cheap one. I'm not convinced that three front armor is of great benefit because mostly they're going to be trying to snipe these with potentially artillery and stuff like this in the team games. You're going to be running them away if units get close to them. So the front armor isn't going to help. What you actually need is top armor, and you don't get decent top armor, so it doesn't matter. So moving on to infantry. Now, you know, there's a lot of choice here in the grand scheme of things. I like Motostrelki Metis, so I'm going to go straight to the Motostrelki Metis. I like a long-range launcher on infantry. They're good for sitting in the edges of towns. They can sit in forests long-range if you really want, but I'm a big fan. Now, you can rank these guys up. You make them veteran, and then, you know, there's six of them rather than nine, which is a bit of a loss. It does increase the Metis quite considerably in its accuracy, though. You go from 55 all the way up to 63. I almost think that's worth it for them. And if they're not going to be near a commander to buff them up to that level, it's probably worth it. In terms of how you can bring them in, you've either got a BMP-1P 
or the MTLB. Now this comes down to a pricing thing. How much do you want to spend? Honestly, the BMPs are really good and they do get a missile launcher on them as well. So for the extra 15 points, for the fact they have a cannon and a missile launcher, I'd actually bring them in in that, but it does mean you're paying extra for the unit. But six of those brought in with the BMPs works for me. Uh, next thing I'm going to go for straight away is Sapri RPO. Long-ish range launcher. Good against other infantry. Again, it's up to you how you bring them in. I would actually just bring them in in the gas so I can sell it later. Because these guys are just going to be in towns or in forests doing as much damage as possible themselves. So I'd rather just have them in in something cheap. And again, I don't need to rank them up at all. They're coming in as they are. I'm also going to bring in the Sapri for the same reason. Satchel charges. It's all about the Satchel charge with these guys. They're an eight-man squad, actually, which isn't bad. And again, they're just coming in in the standard transport. Now, other options, you've got these guys, which are obviously the three PKM guys. They're your fire support team. They're not a bad option. It depends how you play, I suppose. They do have the option of the BMP3. BMP3s are very, very good. So... Any way you can bring in a BMP3 is potentially worth it, bearing in mind they are very expensive. But they're sort of worth the price and that's why they're expensive. I'll come back to these guys because while I do like them, there's situations where you'll bring them in but you don't want them too close. You want them behind your other forces. You don't want them getting shot at quite so much. You want them to suppress the enemy. So other than that, you've got these guys who are pretty cheap infantry. They have a really good RPG, to be fair. And they just have some rifles, and they're a four-man squad. For a little bit of harassment, I don't think they're bad. So I wouldn't not bring them in, because I think they're very good for sticking along supply lines, getting behind enemy lines, taking out enemy vehicles as they come in. I mean, 21 penetration, that's still good against most tanks as well. So, you could stick those in. Again, i bring them in in a gas, keeping their price as low as possible. I wouldn't rank them up. I don't think there's much benefit to it. The accuracy on that launcher is already 70%. Why bother ranking them up? UAZs with various weapons. For the memes, certainly, but I wouldn't go out of my way to bring them in. In terms of the ATGMs, Conkers definitely. Just bring in Conkers. Uh, how you bring them in is again up to you. I see no reason not to just bring them in in the UAZ. You're going to be bringing in plenty of BMPs with the Mortstrelke. So I would just bring them in the UAZ. It's quick, it's fast, it's efficient, you can sell it afterwards. Happy days. In terms of the actual infantry themselves, accuracy isn't spectacular of 45%. If you bump them up, you only get four of them. It does make it 51%. You have to ask yourself, do you want these guys to be accurate or are you using them as a deterrent? So if you're using them as a deterrent to just scare people away from attacking, then it doesn't really matter if they're ranked up or not. If you're planning to hopefully get some kills with them, which ideally you would want to considering how much they cost, then yes, I'd rank them up to at least veteran just for the extra boost. I mean, I know 6% doesn't seem like much, but it's better than nothing. Personally, I would bring them in a Veteran, and I'm going to use them more as a mixture of deterrent and harassment. But each that are on there, I, I don't think the Conquers are the be-all and end-all, put it that way. I could probably leave them out of my deck and not be too upset. Next up, Mortstarkey. So, you got the BMP guys, and you got the standard guys. It's an 8-man squad and a 7-man squad. There's not a huge amount of difference. Honestly, the Motosharky BMP, you're bringing in for the sake that they're coming in a BMP. You get 4 of these guys. Uh, if you rank them up, you get 6. I feel like these guys are such spammable infantry. I don't think there's... You know, there's not enough of a bonus for making them veteran for me that I would want to do it. I kind of just want to bring them in as they are. So I would bring in 
a range of BMPs. The reason I say that is because the BMP3 is so expensive, but I do want that option. So, BMP3, possibly ranked up for the extra accuracy, but it's not a huge boost to the accuracy on that missile. But really, I use the BMP for killing infantry because of the 30mm cannon. But I would probably bring these guys in just as trained. And I bring in one set with a BMP3 because I like having the option. And then I'd step down to the BMP2 because it's still very good. And I'd probably bring in another two stacks. And this is where you could potentially say, well, I can increase them because they've got the conkers and it will increase the accuracy of that. And again, the BMP2 does have an auto cannon, so it's good against infantry. Bearing in mind that this deck has decent tanks, you're not relying on the BMPs for a tank gun. So don't get bogged down in the idea that you need to bring the BMP1 with its tank gun. So I would say grab yourself two sets of these guys with a BMP2. Or drop one of those and bring in both sets of the standard motor strelke. There's not a huge difference. I mean, there's a difference in terms of the RPG they get. But just bear in mind that your last slot is going to be for a commander. So you will need that last slot free. Going back to these guys, it's up to you if you feel there's going to be situations where you are going to utilize them well. They require a bit more micromanaging than the other units because you don't really want them in the front line. You want them behind the other units laying down supportive fire, preferably. A little bit more micromanaging. What I'm actually going to do, because I've already got the BMP3s and I have the BMP2s, I'm actually going to drop that. I'm going to bring standard motor strike in a gas because I want to be able to sell that. Next. I'm very tempted to bring these guys because I want to test them out. I haven't used them in a while. And I want to see how effective they are now at stun locking when micromanaging them. So that's me playing around with them a bit. That's why I'm going to take them. I'm also going to take them with a BMP2, which is quite pricey. But the reason I'm doing that is because I want that auto cannon once more. You've got the BMP1s. They're equally very good. And this one's very good because it's got a grenade launcher on it. Not a bad thing to have a grenade launcher, especially in infantry combat. It's still got an ATGM. It's quite interesting that these two are the same price, to be honest. The big difference is just one's got a machine gun and one's got a grenade launcher. Not tried the grenade launchers in a while. Something else to have a little play around with. But BMP2 costs I want that autocannon. And then finally a commander, well you have two choices, the Motostalki commander or the Sapri commander. One is four man squad, the other is a four man squad, they're both the same price. You get three of each. These guys have slightly better penetration on their launcher. That's my deciding factor in that, so there we go. Okay, moving on to artillery. So artillery is obviously improved massively from where we were. Um... These guys get a lot of decent artillery. Mostly, I'm talking about these things here because they're cheap, they're effective. Okay, 130 points isn't that cheap, but it's it's cheap enough. So definitely want a, a stack of mortars in there. There's no reason to rank them up. Stack of mortars coming in in a cheap vehicle. D30s, again, bringing those in because they're pretty good. 122 millimeters, nothing wrong with them. They can also be used as a cannon. They've got a you know heat round with nine penetration. It's not terrible. And then you got these things, which are obviously the bigger cannon, 152 millimeter. Again, plenty of damage. Just filling all those one slot or one point activation slots. I'm happy with that. That's enough artillery for me to do plenty of harassment. Tanks is a big part of this deck. They get some really good tanks for what they are. So straight away, we're going to ignore this stuff at the top for the moment. We are going to go back to it. We have the T-80. So the T-80 BV, we're going to take that. No questions asked. D-rank it up and take four of them. 
probably. I think that's probably worth it. Increases the accuracy quite a bit. Increases the accuracy of the missile. It's a tank that's worth bringing in. Veteran and then potentially having a command tank near it. You do get two sets of command tank options. You get the T-80 BVK. And you get the T-80 BK. I mean, you're paying for the extra armor here. I want the extra armor here. Simple as that. No messing. The more armor you have on a command tank, the more chance it has of surviving a shot. So, great. Uh, T-80B, again, really good tank. Little bit more expensive, this. If you look at the difference, it's all about the armor. So it's completely up to you what you bring here. I would actually potentially bring another four of those. I know it's 25 points more, but it's a lot of extra armor for that price. That thing has 14. They're still really good. But if I'm going to bring them in, I bring them in as trained rather than veteran. And then I've just got nine of them to throw around, which works for me. You've got the sure term and you've got the Conkers vehicles. I mean, if you are so inclined, they're pretty decent. They've got a good range. You're just going to micro them a bit. But honestly, I would now think about bringing in the T-62s. They're not bad tanks, they're really cheap, they're very effective. I would even consider the T-62M1 a little bit spammable. I mean, you get eight of the things, which is pretty good, and they're only 75 points. Okay, it's not a T-55A, but that's not bad. So what you're paying for here is T-62M1, bit bog standard, T-62M, it's got a missile, T-62MV, it's got slightly more armor. 25 points for slightly more armor and a missile isn't bad. It's not going to do you much good, that extra armor, I suppose. Looks better, though, doesn't it, the tank? I'd bring these in, as they are eight of them. I think that's pretty reasonable. Now, these you only get four of. These you get six of. I mean... At this stage, it's completely up to you. It depends how you play with tanks. If you feel like you want a wall of very heavy tanks, do that. If you want to bring in some sure terms, do that. If you want to bring in the repeater. People have mixed feelings about this one. I'm not sure, to be honest. It's not a bad gun, but it's not, you know, it's not a tank at the end of the day. So it's up to you. I don't think it's bad, but I'd rather have a tank. You only get four of those, but they're 100 points. That's pretty cheap. These are 90 points. You get six. They're already ranked up the veteran. I think at this point, it's a difficult choice whether you're bringing more T-80s or you start thinking about just bringing in the T-62s. I'm almost tempted to bring in... I think I'll bring in another stack of T-80s because they're good. You just have to bear in mind the cost a lot. And I think we'll bring in the slightly cheaper with 10 front armor. It's such, it's such a difficult choice because otherwise they're very similar. It's just the front armor that makes it different. 10 points for two front armor. That's difficult. That is really difficult. I think we go with the cheaper option. And we get six. So we have some some spammable tanks. Recon. Well, as ever, if you like choppers, they're a good option. You've got the option of the BRM1, which has exceptional optics, which now that exceptional's been buffed, I'd actually take those, definitely. I don't think you need to rank them up. Uh, you've got the Grenzers, which are cheap and cheerful seven of them that come in a truck you can stick them in Razvedka pretty good squad again only four of them now the Grenzers have exceptional stealth and the Razvedka have exceptional stealth but the Grenzers actually have a bigger squad size they don't have any anti-tank though so for me these guys are purely scouts and they're priced accordingly but I will take them. I will also take some Razvedka. And I will take them in the new UAZ with Recon. 
because that gives me both the Radvedka and a recon unit. So I get two recon for bringing in just one set of units. Obviously, you know, let's be fair here. It also means that you're probably not going to be selling the transport unit. But you get 12 of those. I'm not going to rank them up. I like to spam recon when I'm playing a game a bit more seriously than 10v10. Razvedka Heavy, I mean, you know, they're, they're not massively different from the Grenzers. Um, you've got more vehicle options. You have the option of the Razvedka BMP-1P, which obviously has decent weaponry on it, and it's a recon, but its optics are only good. It's not like it's amazing for the price. So I'd actually move on and come back if we have spare points at the end. And yeah... I mean, I'm going to take the Iglers just because we want some Iglers. I do like my man pads, you know this. And they're, they're pretty accurate. Now you've got the option of the Strellas, you've got the other Strellas, and you've got the Radar Osa. So, I really like the Strellas. I know not everybody does, but I like them because I can bring them in and ignore them. And they're really good harassment. So I would actually bring those in. I wouldn't even bother ranking them up. I'd just take six of them like that. I'd bring in the Cub. Because the Cub is very good in its range. Its accuracy is trash though. And you only get four of them. If you rank them up. They're still only 46%. You do get the Biryusa. Which is reasonable for what it is. It's good against choppers. It's goodish against aircraft I think I'd bring the cub though because it's got such a long range and on the off chance it gets a hit great and again I'd rank it down and bring in the four and go for the option that I've got many and surely one missile will hit but again they only have three missiles so you're gonna have to have resupply for these things Buryusa isn't a bad option the auto cannons for anti-air are pretty good in the game so certainly not to be underestimated, but you know, it is radar again, so you're gonna have to babysit. The same goes for the cub, of course, don't forget that. Helicopters, you get some decent helicopters here, and as we know, helicopters are pretty good. And uh, some of the helicopters are going to get uh, flare launchers. So, you know, it, it is certainly up there as something to be thinking about. So in terms of choppers, you have the Rocket 3, which has 80 millimeters times 40 times 2, and that is 100 points. You got the Rocket 2, which has 64 times 57 millimeters, and that is three sets of those. And the Rocket 1, which is basically half that. Hang on a minute. What is going on with the pricing of this unit? 120 points. Five points more gets you double the amount of rockets. Eh? There's a mistake there somewhere. I'm sure that used to be almost double the price. That's exceptionally cheap. <laughs> I'm taking that. 80 mil rockets, obviously better. Definitely going to stun tanks. But that is a bargain. Five points more for double the amount of rockets. That's got to be a mistake. Yeah, that's got to be a mistake. Moving on swiftly before someone notices. So, we don't have a lot of activation points left. We're on the aircraft. What do we love? We love an SU-25. We like an SU-25 rocket attack plane. We like an SU-25 anti-tank. Do we like the cluster? Eh, we've got six cluster bombs, but maybe we could have something faster than that. Uh, we want something anti-air. We're probably going to take the SU-27S, because it's the best one there. Uh, obviously, the MiG-23, nothing wrong with it. It's all right. It's just not as good. So it depends if you want to bring in something cheap or not. I'd rather just go with the SU-27S. And I've got three points left, so I'm going to take another bomber of some description. Uh, we've got rocket, we've got AT. I guess we go for something HE. 
Uh, this has six bombs, this has four bombs, this has eight bombs. I think we'll go with the eight bombs. Napalm's pretty good, it's quite expensive. But I'm really, I'm feeling the HE bomber, eight bombs, 500 kilograms, I think that's pretty good. Let's go with that. So, that's a deck, simple as that. As I say, this isn't necessarily what you would choose in a 1v1 scenario. Because at the end of the day, you're going to want sometimes cheaper effective units than things that you're maybe going to have fun with. Or things that, you know, are a bit more expensive. Because you know you've got a teammate that's going to back you up and you can afford to be bringing in more expensive units. So, just bear that in mind. This deck isn't the be-all and end-all by any means. It's what I would take thinking more about team games. But hopefully I've tried to explain a little bit about why I've taken what I've taken while I've gone through. So let's step aside. Let's head into the 79th and have a look at that as well. Hi everyone and welcome back to the 79th deck that we're going to have a look at now. So same as the previous deck. We're just going to whiz through. I'm not going to do a recap. We're just going to build the deck. So straight away. I mean, the supply options here are pretty similar to the previous deck, if not identical. So you've got 10 of these, which is 500 supply each, or you've got 5 of these, which is 1,000 supply each. I'm just taking 2 stacks of those again, because I feel like that's enough. I've got 10 vehicles. That's enough for me to cover um, an area for a map that I'm in. I'm happy with that. In terms of your command, you're a little bit more limited. I mean, again... It's For me, it's about the top armor rather than the front armor, so I'm just taking the cheapest option. Simple as that. Moving on. Okay, infantry, we're a little bit more limited in our choices here, but there are some very good choices for infantry. So, first thing, let's just grab a commander. We've got the same as the previous. It's, you know, it's six and two threes. The reality is these guys have slightly better anti-armor. So if they do come across a vehicle, at least they're going to be able to defend themselves. And again, I'm just going to bring them in in the vehicle I can sell. Now we're going to bring the Sapri RPO because of the Sapri RPO. And again, they're coming in trained and they're coming in in a gas. And the Sapri are coming in trained and they're coming in in a gas. That's our mainstay anti-infantry heavy hitters, shall we say. Now we're thinking about the anti-infantry, like, you know, proper combat troops and the anti-tank infantry. So, I would bring at least one Metis, because, as you know, I like the Metis. Um, your choice here is to bring them in in the BMP-1P or the 1G. It depends if you want the grenade launcher or not. I still need to test grenade launchers in the latest patches to see how they are. They certainly had improved them and their accuracy. And hopefully they do a bit more damage than they did originally. So it might be worth trying that out. So let's do that. Uh, do you rank them up and take six? It does add a bit of accuracy, doesn't it, to that metis. But you get so few infantry slots in this deck, I'd actually take them trained. Because I think you're going to be relying on the extra infantry. Now there's no really cheap infantry in this deck. You're basically talking about the Motostrelki. Now, I would start thinking about the Motostalki BMP because you have the option of the BMP2, which gives you a launcher and it gives you an auto cannon, and it will act as backup anti infantry. Auto cannons are still pretty decent against infantry. You don't get a BMP3 here, remember? So I would think about bringing in a couple of squads of those. And again, I wouldn't bring them in ranked up. They're coming in as trained because I want numbers. There's less slots here, you're more chance of running out. Would I bring in these guys? Probably not, to be honest. There's situations where, as I say, they're going to be helpful if you micromanage them. But honestly, I think I'd rather just bring in some Motostrelki at this point. I think that's what I'll do. I'll stick in some standard Motostrelki in a gas, and that gives me the cheap option to bring those in. A sort of an, in an emergency when I'm really low on cash. Infantry is always a hard one because it depends how much you're going to micromanage them, how you're going to play them. So I do think these guys would be very good with the HE and suppression if you play them carefully. 
but I wouldn't say you see them too often in the uh, ranked games, put it that way. Artillery, again, you get some decent choices, and let's be honest, this deck has the best rocket artillery in the game, so for the sake of the memes and how ridiculous they are, we're taking a Buratino. You can actually take two because there's two cards, but I wouldn't take more than one. I feel like that would be a waste. You've got better artillery than that. I'd take some mortars because mortars are good. I'd take them in the UAZ. And I'd take the D30 because it's reasonably cheap. But that said, you know, considering that's... The, I mean, they've got the same gun on, really, don't they? It's 20 points cheaper, though. But that comes with its own vehicle. And that's the big gun. Hmm. I'd be tempted thinking about team games more than 1v1s. I, I bring in the one that's got its own vehicle mounted. So the self-propelled, purely because I can move it around a bit more and not have to worry about it, whereas these guys are very slow. So let's do that and bring them in as trained and we bring in three. And then we've got one point activation slot left. I think I'll bring in Akatasia as well. Just to have the option of really heavy hitting. I do you bring in more of those guys. No, I think I think we go with a set of those as well. It gives us options of what we can bring in depending on what the enemy is up to. If we want to count the battery, probably bring in the cheaper ones and have three of them. If we were going to try and hit heavy stuff on the front line, then the Akatasi is going to be pretty good. And obviously the Buratino. I still think that needs slightly nerfed, because I think it does too much damage to vehicles. Tanks. Well, that's what this deck is all about, isn't it? So, we've got the T-80UD, which they added. I really wouldn't bother ranking that up. I really wouldn't. I'd bring in... Two stacks of those gives you the option of four. They're really expensive tanks, but they're pretty good, aren't they? 21 front armor. T-80U, again, is a very good tank. I mean, the truth is, between these two... Although it's slightly more accurate, it doesn't have any more penetration or anything. Sorry, I'll pin those, because I realize I'm flicking between them. It's an awful lot of money for a single point of armor. Now, don't get me wrong. That single point of armor is massive in terms of the fact that a lot of the weapons do 20 or less penetration in terms of the tank guns. So that is... Oh, I'm, I'm now thinking I don't want to take two sets of those cards. I definitely want to take these. I really don't want to rank them up. That threw a spanner in my works, because I honestly thought there was more of a difference between the UD and the U. Uh, we've got the T80 here, which... You can rank them up and bring them in at four for a little bit of a boost. I bring in two cards of those. The T80... B versus the T eighty B V I Z D thirty nine. Um, you're paying twenty five points for a considerable increase in front armor. I actually think tw it's worth twenty five points for that considerable increase. Three points front armor, one point side armor is pretty decent. Uh, we want the command as well. I think again, I'd bring. I'm going to bring in the the more expensive command tank because I want the extra armor. Simple as that. Okay, we've got plenty of room still to play with tanks. Uh, do we bring in the flame tank for the fun of it? It's not used a lot in the game, to be honest. I kind of want to play around with it a bit, so I'm going to bring it in. Don't necessarily take that, 
I'm taking it because I want to play around with it. I definitely take some T62s because they're a little bit more spammable, and in a you know in a pinch when you're not got 300 points to spare, you can bring in a couple of these instead, and you've got a bit of firepower. Uh, I'm really trying to convince myself that the T80UD is worth 350 points, and I'm really struggling to convince myself. I really don't think it is. I can have nine of those. I can have six. They haven't got the best front armor though. And they're very expensive. They have better front armor. And they're only slightly more expensive. I'm com I I feel bad because the T80B is actually not a bad tank. But for the sake of 25 points, three extra armor, that really does seem worth it. And there should be enough tanks there. I mean that's t 16 T80BVs. We got the T80U, we got the T80UDs. I'm still trying to convince myself that's worth it. I'm leaving them in there, but I, I just don't know about that. That's a lot of money for one point of armor. I realize it does push it over a threshold in the game, but I'll leave it. I, I want to test it, see how much fire it actually takes. Right, recon. Pretty straightforward again, depending on your point of view. BRM1, because it has exceptional optics. Sorry, let me unpin that. Uh, taking that. I like the Razvedka, because they have all the weapons to choose from. And I would bring them in in that, again, UAZ. It only has good optics, but it's still more recon. More recon is good. And I'd bring the Spetsnaz Group, because I just think they're an actual, an actual good squad. And I'm thinking more and more, if they're going to be adding fobs and things, it's time to start peeking around behind enemy lines with a recon infantry. I wouldn't bother ranking them up at the moment. I think their weapons are accurate enough. And I would bring them in a very cheap chopper. You could bring them in an MI-8T. That does give them a little bit of firepower. But it's not going to kill a fob, so... These guys are more for spotting, so we bring them in in the cheap option. We are getting very low on points in this deck, and I'm frightened that I'm going to have to remove something before we get to the end. Here we go, we're going to take the Iglas, we're going to take them just trained. We've got Tunguska as an option here, and it's not something we see brought in a lot in Warno. Which is a shame, because the Tunguska was a fantastic unit in Wargame Red Dragon. Um, the Cub's very cheap, but its accuracy is poor. The accuracy on this is a lot better, and it does have very good range against choppers. But you have to babysit it because the guns are radar. But you could just turn those off. That's what we used to do in Wargame. Is we turn off the radar gun and just use the uh, missiles. I'm actually going to stick that in. I'm going to stick that in. And I'm going to take Mastrellas. As, as I say, I like Mastrellas just to sit at random places and be a bit of harassment. Even if they miss, if you've got enough of them, it's just extra harassment, isn't it? And technically, I do have one activation point here, but I really just want to move on because I'm running very short on points. Helos, interesting, isn't it, that they don't have the Rocket 2 like the other deck does. I'm really not bothered about a chopper with anti-tank because I've got so many tanks in this deck. I kind of want to bring some rocket choppers though. I'm just going to bring the cheap ones. And they're the cheapest. 80 mil rockets. And they just provide a bit of harassment. They are good. They're probably worth it. Now we've not got a lot of room left for jets here, do we? So, SG-25 rocket attack jet. 
the Tanner special. Um, I guess for anti air, it's the MiG 31. And then. There's a lot of choices here, but. Some nice cheap options for AA. Cluster, Napalm. I'm struggling a bit. I guess we could go with a HE bomber. And that would leave us with one point. And we don't have a lot of jets in this deck, but honestly, it feels more like a ground forces deck anyway. I can have a point there. I can have a point there. I think that's the only place I've got a single point left. Yeah. I only have the two anti-air aircraft. I don't want to rely too heavily on choppers in this deck, but they are good. So it seems a shame not to have some. And I've got reasonable amounts of AA there. I'm tempted by the anti-air chopper. 435 points. Because at least that'll be a little bit of harassment against enemy choppers as well. Let's go with that. We'll give them a try. Okay. That's turned into a weird deck, to be honest. It's not quite what I imagined I would end up taking, I think. Don't know why that is. But it gives us a nice coverage of everything within reason. And I think that's what's good about the 79th. It has a bit of everything. It's not completely limited to just being a tank deck. Again, as ever, if you're playing 1v1 ranked games, you won't necessarily take what I've taken here. You'll want to adapt it. But hopefully, again, going through the units has made, you know... A little bit of difference in the choices you would make based on weaponry and capability. But again, please do, of course, watch my earlier videos when I've made decks. Because I've probably talked in a bit more detail in those about the different weapon systems. And while there's been a few changes, unless I've specifically mentioned it, it's probably not massive. Now... I was debating doing the fourth, but I think I'll leave that till another day because this video is already going to be a good 40 minutes long, probably, or something like that. So I'll leave it there. That's the two deck. I will do one for the fourth and maybe something else and try and, you know, do them back to back like this. But let me know if there's a specific deck you would like to see me make. I'm always up for having another look. Obviously, if I've made it very recently, I probably won't make it again, but there's plenty that I haven't done in a while. And I need to rebuild some of my decks anyway. But if there's one in particular you want me to go through, then please do let me know and I will go through it as best I can. But as ever, please do like, share, subscribe. And I'll see you all soon for some more Warner.